All right, guys, so just wanted to give you a quick little heads up about what you're gonna see in this video. A little bit different than what we do in our normal videos, but I hope that you enjoy these. And comment down below, do you like this style of live lesson? We're trying to do some more lessons of me coaching a real person, right, to help you all play better. This one we did outside, a little bit quicker pace. As I watched it back, I was talking really fast, which I probably am now, so I apologize if it's too fast, I'll slow that down. Um, but working with Eric here, scratch level player, some of how and what we worked on to load into his right side, some swing plane stuff, hopefully just some little nuggets that you enjoy. So let us know down below, do you like this, don't like this, want more of this, whatever. Ultimately, I make these videos here and we make these to be able to help you. So hopefully you enjoyed today's video. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. And this is a really good lesson for you, for <clears throat> you if you're watching this. Eric and I worked a couple times on his swing pattern. Now, Eric's a really good player. I hate to say it, but he's beat, we played once, he beat me. So he's better than me, even. So he can make like things work, right? Like you can make things work in the pattern, but some of the stuff that we talk about is just like, how, how do you make your life easier? <clears throat> and what easier would be for us is, how do we get the club going up and down, like on as close to one plane as possible, right? And so if, if we have that in there or not, what it, t tell us again, once you just said what you're feeling there. So I'm trying like to deep and then over. Obviously, depth into this right hip. Yeah. And then kind of flat almost. Yeah. And then swinging high right shoulder. Bingo. And so, like, almost it probably feels like it's almost like a coocher, like in and then over Arnold Palmer or Sam Sneed. Now, for Eric, that works really good because what's your normal come from? Like, like show us your, your old, like the bad way. And almost like real up top. Yeah. Kind of like JT. And then drop it way inside and flip it. Eric is good enough where he could get away with that. 90% of golfers, right, that I seen to come in, when you make a backswing with no turn, arms lift, they're not gonna reroute it inside, good like you do. They go more this way, right? I'm sure you see it in the range all the time. And then, so the lack of turn and lack of depth on the way back is the starting point of that motion. Now, Eric has to feel like he goes way deep and way over, and when we look on camera, if we show the swing, it, it goes essentially up and down one line. So you have to feel the opposite of the issue, yeah. right? So if Eric's saying here like, oh wow, I really feel like I'm turning this early one piece takeaway, getting things lined up deeper. And we look at it, it's like, oh no, that looks like perfect. Cause he needs to feel that to fix the opposite motion. So what I want to do is just talk through some of the stuff that we have talked about before. And then you and I will kind of look at it and like, hey, where's it at compared to before now? And, and what do we need to do? So the goal is just to make life a little bit a little bit easier for us, right? So let's let's start with the hip turn piece. Let's take your setup. When we first started talking about this with your hip turn, there's a couple of feels, right? Yeah. But it's basically like, how do you get more hip and core turn during the backswing is like just feeling it, yeah. right? It was like the belt buckle away from the target, yeah. feeling more. What, what else did you feel? Kind of right pocket around, the core leading the rotation. So instead of like rotating this way, it was definitely more here. Yeah. It almost felt like Obviously, I don't want to get this going. Yeah, exactly. But for me, it felt like that, almost. That right hip was pushing back and around. Yeah. And when the hip pushes back and around, what does that enable us to do? That enables us to get the hands more in, right? Yeah. The hand path more in, the arms deeper. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So the arms are like stopping here. Because there's no turn. Yeah. So imagine we make a backswing. If you make a backswing, there's no hip turn. My arms got nowhere to go but up. So they can't go in or back anywhere. And then if you're really good, you get it back on plane here. It's just difficult to do all the time. So one of the things you can do if we're trying to do the hip turn, let's just do one with this through the belt loops. One of the pieces we started with just for a visual fair, and you can do this as well. You want to make sure that you turn enough during the backswing and get the arms and hands deep enough, right? That's like step one. If we just put the alignment rod through the belt loops for him, and then we put a club or an object on the ground about 45 degrees, right, the target and the golf ball making a 90 degree angle. His objective to get to the top is to feel like this stick gets relatively close to that 45 degrees, go ahead up to the top one time. So he's trying to feel like he turns that at or past that club on the ground, which for him feels like he's turning quite a bit compared to normal, right? Go ahead and reset. But when he's able to do that hip turn, let's do that one more time, that allows his body to get those arms and hands working in and up. Reset your setup again. So what we're looking to do and what you should be looking to do to make it easy is just to hit some basic checkpoints. You know, the club's pretty much right down the toe line during the takeaway. <clears throat> that would be about normal. From here, we're trying to get it up through about the right, <coughs> excuse me, right pec, right bicep, and then behind the shoulder. Those depth checkpoints are not gonna look perfect because I didn't reset the camera here for the driver, but you, we, maybe we'll show an example here of a driver of like a, you know, Robert Rock hand path. 
that. We're just trying to go up and down the same, the same path, right? That's the objective. So this little drill is a visual, I'm just gonna take this out, would be a good starting point, right? If you don't have enough of the turn. Now, let me just watch you hit one more air from back here with the driver feeling those same pieces. <clears throat> Excuse me, goodness. So even here, like when we look at this iron swing, this one from before, and let's check your hands, good. So down the toe line. That's less outside. Too. Yeah, way less outside. So you can see like for you, if we look at, we can put his uh, you know, um, swing up here with the iron, the hands are going pretty much right down the toe line. Club head's in line with that. And then for you, that club face, you know, it's tilted down the same as your spine line, which is good for you. Yeah. Your tendency is hit the hands out open face, yeah. right? Lead arm is in slightly. And then they're gonna keep progressively working in. By the time we get to left arm parallel, we want those pretty much in line with the right pec, right bicep underneath the shoulder. Yeah. All good. And then we want the butt of the club close to the ankle behind. So I mean, that backswing's money, dude. Yeah. And that's about yeah, as good as you can do it. And so, I mean, we, so there's still a little bit of the, the butt of the club wanting to work back behind you in transition. Yeah, it drops which, like an inch. Yeah, just a little bit, just habitually, which we just have to watch. <clears throat> but that should get easier and easier and easier. Now, how long have you been doing that? Uh, like a month, probably. Yeah, probably, probably a month, maybe even a little bit more than that, yeah. of like feeling those those sort of things. So even at Eric's level, like if we're, he probably is going to need to be thinking about these pieces at some degree for a while, right, an extended period of time. And when he's judging himself outside of hitting the ball well, the goal should be, again, just up and down one line. So if we look at that, yeah. we say, hey, that went back pretty pretty good. But the arms still want to go back a little bit because they used to have to go back, right? Yeah. So based on that, we need to feel a little bit more the out part. Not more, not more of anything on the way back. We have to feel more of the out part on the way down. I think the pull draw also comes from least before exactly hard. yes because if, if you're if you're too far back and stuck behind you you got to do something to try and get that club back in front yeah, it's like when i'm hitting it really good now i feel like i'm coming like over yeah and my hands are just doing nothing at the ball exactly but it almost feels to me like i'm holding it because i'm just <laughs> exactly Th these are really good lessons for all of us where everything eric's saying is just he he's feeling the opposite of what his issues are so you can use that for whatever, whatever the thing is, right? Like he's feeling the shoulder go high and the club go outside because he's used to it going, his shoulder going down and the club's going in. Why? Because his arms are too high, right? Well, you can make that work. I mean, and shoot well under par. It's not incorrect. Uh, would, you, would you just like it to be easier? Yeah. But that lesson, let's do that again. So more of the out and over on the way down. The lesson that applies is whatever your issue is, you have to feel the opposite and exaggerate. Yeah, exactly. That's a perfect feel for you. <clears throat> Good into the right hip and depth to the top, and then over on the way down. Yeah, that's really close to being perfect right there. And that's about the ball flight that we want, yeah? Like when I when I saw you play in the ball- More speed than I was just did there. I think that's why I lost my balance. The ball flight that I think you play really well with is a minimal curve. like. Yeah. I don't think the ball should really curve more than two, three yards. Well, that's why my problem is deciding whether to play a cut or a draw. But even if you're playing those curves, like if you're playing a normal like 30 yard wide fairway for you, I'd be like, I would, I would want your ball to cut like four yards, yeah. you know? So like, even if it doesn't or it goes the other way and you're starting it on the line you want, it should still be pretty, pretty tight. Pretty neutral target. Well, I, I would think for you, especially with the coming over it, yeah. the reality is you can make either one work. I would pick neutral targets for sure, starting the ball very centered. And the more you got the shoulder over and the hands out, the more it'd be slight fade bias. Yeah, I mean, that's when I was playing my best anyway. Yeah, I mean, dude. Soft fade. I think a soft fade is, especially the, the better the player, the more I like that. Yeah. I think for someone like you, I'll put myself in that category. I like that little peeler uh, cut off of there. I think what you need to do and what we need to talk about as you go through this is like, how do you do that? And literally never, ever, 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 ever see the ball pull hook. Yeah, I don't want to have any low left. No, especially not if we're going like, like if, if we got a 30 yard wide fairway, I would be trying to start at maybe five yards left to center. Yeah. 
So you have 10 yards to pull it and you got like 20 yards to kind of overcut it. Yes, yeah, so kind of started at the clock. Yeah, exactly. I like that. So that's not gonna be in line with that stick. Yeah, exactly. Same thing, feeling the, into the right hip, the depth on the way back, and then over on the way down. And you can see like Eric's setup pieces where his ball position is, the grip pattern he has, that all lines up to be very neutral. So he doesn't really have anything else earlier on he needs to be worried about there. Yeah, I like that a lot. So like that, that to me should be your like bad shot. But still finds the right side. Yeah, that's probably on the right, just inside the right edge of the fairway. I, I think when you go play, we should do everything humanly possible for you to not see a pull hook. And we should be like, hey, that little tiny overcut is like, man, everything went wrong there. Especially too, because like, if you come down and you were to overdo that piece, that would make the ball want to cut more. So that would even be like a sign of like, okay, maybe even I did that a little bit too much. And you know, and I know, and hopefully you know if you watch our videos, is like, the only way you know for sure is video. But how do you get some ball flight feedback? You know, what we definitely don't want to go into back into is like up, or even if you go deep, tilting and too deep, stall flip. And that's the same thing you're doing with your seven iron. If I do that though, I can start to feel like my rib and my hip start like almost pinching together. Yeah, like what I'm are like the- sore there and I'm like, okay, I'm doing it wrong. And it's to your, to your point of the JT thing, like he has his arms high like that. He's one of the best players in the world. He has so much of that. Again, it's doable. He, he plays great. It's just uh, more difficult. I think those last two look great. I mean, this should also give me more room here. 100%. Everything else looks great. Your setup looks great. Backswing piece, a good turn into the right hip, deeper, and then over coming down. Yeah, beautiful. I mean, that's a perfect ball flight. That probably, there's wind left to right. So that ball probably really curved two or three yards with the wind, five or six. Yeah. And that's that's perfect. I think that trajectory for you is good. I think that ball play is good with a little cut miss. Now, the higher level player you are, the more I think a cut makes sense. Cause it's like what Eric and I don't want to have when we go play is a ball that hooks left. Like that's like the, to me, I think like the worst thing. Better players usually want to get rid of a hook. Yeah. If you're coming from a higher handicap level and you're like, hey man, I've been fading it my whole life. You probably got to feel the exact opposite of Eric. Right, like you, you, you need to feel the deep stuff, right? Would you agree most all golfers go, they have too much of the up. Yeah, they don't have the depth. Right. Yeah, and they slice to the right. So you need to feel the same things we're talking about. You need to get the hip turn. You need to get the depth pieces. But Eric and I get too far underneath, right? Too far inside. So we need to feel over it this way. If you shoot above, let's say 85, 90 and above, you probably already have too much of this. And so you need to do the opposite of what we're talking about. You need to feel more of the shoulder going down, feel more of the inside. But for he and I, we need the exact opposite of that. And then it's just monitoring. Like at Eric's level, how, how good he is, I would want him to monitor this only for maintenance purposes, but essentially just play a lot of golf, right? Like go play, do the practice that's required, score good, but get ahead of an issue. You know, like one of the things I think we, not you and I in particular, but we probably have and a lot of good players is like, you don't look at it until it starts becoming a problem. It's like you go to the doctor after you get sick type of thing. Yeah. The thing should be like, you should go to the doctor the whole time and then like you get ahead of it. So I would say the better you are with the pattern, you just preventative stuff, like quick check, or am I good like that? And then play competitive stuff, you know, like golf, do the kind of practice you want. Only as much mechanics as is needed. All right guys, so that wraps up. Just kind of a quick 20 minute session that I had with Eric. Give you a little bit of a different level of player. Eric's very, very good. Some little minimal stuff that we're talking about. Hopefully you enjoy these. And let me know down below, do you like to see like the scratch level players? Would you rather see higher handicap players? Longer lessons, shorter lessons? We can really do whatever we want. As always, if you wanna work with me, work with us at cagornogolf.com. We'll put that link um, down below. You can send your swings in. Even if you're not here in Florida and can't come in person, uh, send your swings in. Would love to work with you guys there to help you improve your game.